Mm. Yeah, well, well, the first thing is a lot of what we can do. Are you starting already? No, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I don't mind. You just tell me what you're going to do now. Well, to... yeah. Uh... What, you've got questions there? Well, no, not questions, no, they're just general topics. I mean, I, a lot of it's based on, on what we talked about last time. Right. This is, what we have to do then is go away, take this, write this treatment up so then we can then present it and hopefully get this, this grant to make this short film. Yeah. I see. So um, part of this is to go back to old locations to talk about the views of today, such as Covent Garden Market. Now, I don't know if you saw Carol Rice's film, We Are the Land of Boys, but that was... Mm. Someone went back and, and, and redid that and, and interviewed the boy then today. So, I mean, one thing you said, for instance, was that if you were doing, doing it today, you'd do a, a, a film of a shopping mouth. For instance, mm -hmm. so one of the places, one of the locations I thought of was was to walk to sit in a shopping mall, for instance, and talk about how you might represent that today if you were going to do. Well, <clears throat> as I might say, I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do a shopping mall. Shouldn't think so. You did Dreamland. I mean, I mean, Dreamland's one location to go back to. Mm. So the first question is, if we actually, if we got the money to put this film together and actually try to make it, we'd be prepared to come back to the locations with us to talk about them. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <coughs> it's quite extensive, really, isn't it? No, well, no, well, well, about like three Covent, three we're talking four. like sort of Covent Garden Market. Um, Maybe Wakefield and O'Dreamland. Mm. Three, just just three. I mean, we obviously, you know, it's, just, it's, only a it's, it's, it's not, it's not just because you've very got very particular views on 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 how things are and, and what things happening today. So not just your film, but covering something of your views. Yes. Well, go on. Uh, These are questions you're going to ask, eh? Well, more of a... More is that what this thing's here for? Well, no, just to record so we can... So we can sort of... Because I oh, based I this on what... So when are you going to do this now? No, 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 not now. This is just an electronic notebook, so I don't have to scribble down notes. No, all. no, I see. But I mean, you're going to ask the questions now, are you? No, no, no. It's just to, just to talk and discuss about doing it on doing it on site to see what the possibilities so, are. So what it is, we're recording it so that otherwise... I'm sorry, I should have scribbling. asked you if you didn't mind. But... No, so are you recording this now? Yeah, yeah. Good heavens. So yeah, otherwise we'd be sitting here scribbling notes and it'd be very difficult for us to talk to you and listen at the same time. And, no, but you have started asking questions now, have you? Well, he's... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm a bit nervous, so. Oh, don't be nervous. It's all right. I mean, you only just arrived. Yes, I know. Sorry, I shouldn't have started so soon, maybe. Well, it's just useful you to know... You want to turn it off? I don't mind. No, I don't mind a bit, as long as I know what you're doing. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, 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 part of it, you know, um, as, um, how you would represent something today. I mean, if you wouldn't do a shopping mall today, what would you do today? If you were going to go back... Do you want me to answer now? Well, if you, yeah, if you could. I mean, I mean, I mean, yes, I think the thing you've got to understand is that uh, films of that kind are just as much about the person who makes them as they are about the actual facts, the yeah. social facts, yes. you know. So that um, all those years ago, what me made in the, uh, in the late 50s came out of what we were. And of course, I'm not the same anymore. No, no, but this is the thing. So your views would have changed. So your view of Covent Market, for instance. And my views have changed, and probably my uh, desire to do anything of this kind has changed. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I, mean I, I think the thing is that uh, those days in the uh, mid-50s, if you like, uh, there was a quite different climate of thought and feeling mm. than there is now. For the 90s? Probably at the time. I think that uh, there was a certain optimism in the air um, and in our feelings. And uh, that has passed, I would say. Same. So, um, I mean, Covent Garden, of course, doesn't exist anymore. No. Oh, this is, it's, it's, I said it, it was a, it's become a documentary... A uh, piece of work uh, um, every day except Christmas now, in, in the right portray something that didn't exist. But I mean, you got something now which is, which is very much of the nineties now. The, the, as it's, it's been. Well, what are the nineties? I mean, you you probably know more about the nineties than I do. What are the nineties? Well, everything's been privatised. You, you, know, you virtually have to sit in your. If you're going to hospital, you have to constantly be aware of you know profit and loss on my hospital bed and, and this kind yes. of thing. I mean, I'm very much against. Um, the latest Tory um, 
philosophy. I mean, they, I think they're going far too far. But uh, well, I think they are going far too far, and I think it's true that it really starting way back in the seventies. Uh, that is where the, uh, if you like, the idealism or hope um, went out of things. And I think it was in the seventies, if you like, that money and success started to become the chief um, motivation. Hmm. But I mean, there must be. I mean, there, you must have hope. I mean, for somebody my age and, and younger, you must have hope for the future. We must hope to try and rekindle the. Well, you the, you may have. Yes. Yes. You ha got. Have you got hope? Well, yes. I mean, I do hope really? that my my life isn't going to be totally taken over by. You know, all, all the... Uh, little, well, then it is obviously uh, to people like you that we have to look for um, a spirit of opposition, if you like. Mm, I mean, not just me. I mean, I don't feel I represent my whole... But, I mean, it's just as part of you that I feel, you know. Um, uh, yeah. Um, See, I feel that the um, kind of um, films and that we made in those days, the, first of all the documentary films and then the um, feature films, did uh, show a certain, shall we say, hopefulness, mm. which has been <coughs> probably betrayed. A humanist outlook. It did, but I think that no longer really obtains. I think mm. that uh, generally I would say that the um, British people, that this country, has turned its back on the ideals that we had uh, in... Um, After the war? Yes, and then later in the 50s, if you like, you know. I mean, which started you were represented in the wartime films where they say it's going to be different after the war, so many of the Laundry and Gilead ones and things like that. They well, say they were, of course, in a way naive, yes, but they were hopeful. Mm. And you can think of, uh, say, Humphrey Jennings mm. in a picture like... Um, a diary for Timothy. Something. I think there is a sequence in which a minor is talking and he says yeah. it can never be the same as it was. Right. And yet now we're going back to We are the going war. back, yes. Because I think that climate of hopefulness did not persist. Mm. And in general, um, the British people have turned their back on it. That's why they now vote Tory. Mm. And <clears throat> if you like, I suppose it's why the uh, whole Labour... Uh, government, the socialist principles, uh, has been a failure. Mm. It is a failure. Mm. I don't know what socialism means anymore. Do you? Well, I was a member of the Labour Party, but I mean, I, I couldn't I have my experiences of it weren't that it was terribly what we call right on in a student sense. All those student no. politics are very idealistic and airy fairy. I feel. Um, so part of it will be to go back and not not just talk about the films and locations, but in the way we are talking now about. Um, what's happening and the way you feel things have changed. So mm. it wouldn't be just a film. I say it wouldn't be just a filmmaker's viewpoint, because uh, I feel like that that came over very strongly. You see, talking to you, that you you got got quite distinct views on on things. And it, it yes, views and uh, hopes. As I say, the uh, climate was altogether different. But have you given up hope altogether? I mean, up hope. Well, well, giving up hope for the future, and I don't. I mean, I'll... I would say that my feeling about Britain is pessimistic. Mm. Yes. Right. So yes. Because I don't feel that the effort that we made uh, in our films and the efforts that was um, you could observe in the atmosphere in those days, I don't think it exists anymore. Yeah, so so you could go back to Covent Garden and talk about how you re represented it at the time, and, and how I mean, I don't, you, you know, it, you must have been around there. So I mean, what 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 would you do if you were to represent it today? Well, um, you mean if I had to? If, there were, yeah. if I was told I was going to be shot or imprisoned if I didn't make. No, no, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't mean actually make it. I mean, I mean all, all you would have to do was sort of sit there, and and we we, we would. You could talk about it a bit, and we might go away and shoot a few shots as how you would see it. You know, it would be just, it would be just a, a short interview there, while talking. Well, sorry, I'm trying my best, Lindsay. I'm you are. That's all right. I don't mind. Um, <laughs> but you, 
I mean, perhaps I'd say I don't want to go to Covent Garden. Ah, uh, right. What would you say then? I'd be very disappointed. Why but would you think I would want to go to Covent Garden? Why would you think... Well, I, I think you can talk about your views and hopefully put over put over a, a, what, what to some degree I, I hold, although I'm not a famous film director, so I have to be careful how I put myself out. I don't want to, as, as representing a, a whole generation or whatever. Um, I think really the thing, the point I would make most strongly is that these social views and attitudes were important. Well, I, I, I think they still are. Well, you think they still are, but um, do I think they still are? Well, I hope you do. Why? Well, I, I suppose it's it's the view of you as representing uh, sort of the the. I mean, this is just to go on to something later. So something being anti-establishment and, and, and rebellious to some degree. Well, I suppose I feel that the uh, what we would call the establishment has uh, won. Has uh, won. Yes, I think that the I would say that the <clears throat> hopes and views that we had in those days have not been accepted. That, for instance, free cinema is now completely forgotten. Well, I don't think so. I mean, there are people that do remember it. Still well, remember. I'm glad you say that, but I haven't noticed it. I mean, I, if I look at things that seem to represent um, <clears throat> youth, young people, or established opinions today, uh, if I look at something like Time Out, yeah. Um, I don't see any kind of resemblance in their view, <coughs> which seems to me based chiefly on probably success and profit making, mm. um, which I don't find at all sympathetic and no. not connected with the uh, hopes and feelings we had then. Yeah, well, this is something. This is, I mean, this is the sort of conversation which we could have. On, You're having it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. On, but on, it, it would need to, for our point of view, our program. It would need to be on film, although we, I mean, um, I know. But you, you have, you seem to have this idea that, um, well, that we are all, um, shall we say, slaves of the media. I mean, why would you think it would interest me to? to do all this. Well, it's to be about four days, I think. It might be four days, but why should I do it? Why? why? Well, I mean, to keep you going. have to ask yourself yeah. that. Yes, yes, I know. So hopefully, to try and put forward the views of the past and to try and to try and give something to the people of today and to, to try and show them... But what is your view? What is my view? About, about today or about films or about yeah, whatever? about what I'm saying. About films and hmm. uh, well, I tried making a short film about some about uh, a street actually recently in, in Birmingham, a very modern street with interviews over it, and I tried to be, I tried to make it influenced by um, free cinema and more specifically maybe the documentaries of the forties. Um, well, you see, I don't think free cinema had much to do with the documentaries no. of the forties. Well, the some the social aspects more of it. I suppose the only director we felt Humphrey Jennings. To Humphrey was, Jennings was Jennings. Yes, yes. right. Well, in, in in that sort of attempting to be poetic in terms of the way he put the images over. I'm I'm doing my mm. best there. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Well, you still have, I still need yeah. to get because well the reason I I feel like you know like like you to do something like this is so you could we can see how how one person can assess their work and how their views have changed over the years and how they can feel perhaps that what they did then may not be valid now and why it's not valid now and why it has changed. Um, it's, you know, it's just of an, an interest. Um, mm. Well, supposing I just said piss off, what would you feel? Um, disappointed. Disappointed? Disappointed. I, well, um, I'd, I'd feel that you, you, you obviously didn't believe in your material anymore. You felt that that, you know, if you, if you were saying that, you were saying, well, be okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm not interested in it anymore. I, I know, don't I, think that's true at all. I mean, I think that you, perhaps you've got a, an over-social idea of the films that were made then, because I think that the films that were made then were, um, 
they did have social opinions behind them, but they were, above all, I would say, poetic. Mm. And, of course, mm. that means that, uh, say, a film like Every Day Except Christmas still exists. There mm. it is. Yes. But, I mean, I've noticed that um, it took, I don't know, I should think, I don't know, about um, 30 years before Every Day Except Christmas was shown on the BBC. And uh, for every time that um, John Schlesinger's film um, about the railway, what was that called? John Schlesinger's film about the railway. L L no, a kind of loving music. No, 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 a documentary. No, not, not the, um, oh, I'm sorry, it was called the, um, the not, not a railway man, you don't mean, no? <laughs> no, yeah. sorry. It wasn't made by John Schlesinger. Oh, no, he no. made a film about the station and the little boy getting lost. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of it too. That's not. I, 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 I watch. That's been shown very frequently, and it's interesting because presumably the feelings or ideas or ideals that were behind a film like Every Day Except Christmas are not in the least felt now, not appreciated now, which is why the film is not very much shown. That's true of many of the films I've made. Mm. Well, if's been shown quite a few times. If has been shown quite a few times, yes, that's right. Yes, surprisingly. I mean, for me, it had a great, great impact the first time I saw it. I mean. Well, I'm glad to hear that, yes. But I think it is interesting that if you look at um, books that the... Uh, I think there's a book that the uh, BFI have produced on British films. Robert Murphy. I don't even know what it is. I saw it one day at the um, at Mommy, and I noticed that uh, I think a film like If, in fact, none of the films I've made were ever mentioned. They are not um, seen as belonging to the tradition of British films, are they? Uh, I think there was some. I mean, if you think of Carol Carol Rice's. Uh, films, some of them. Well, Carol Rice, it's interesting that Carol Rice is, is a director who, of course, um, certainly abandoned the um, ideals or hopes he had in the days of free cinema, and he has made um, quite a lot of American films, hasn't he? Mm, yeah. yeah. So, um, but even Carol, I know at the moment, is. Um, wanting to get a film to make. I mean, he hasn't got a film to make. He hasn't got a film financed. Mm. So, um, I mean, I suppose that he is not regarded um, by the, shall we say, the time-out generation in the same way that Neil Jordan is regarded. Mm. And you have to ask yourself, why? Or what are the ideals that Neil Jordan represents? What do you think? Well, Neil, Neil Jordan, these, these, these generation of filmmakers all very much grown out of commercial commercialism and commercialised filmmaking, haven't they? It's like That's true. The, the Hugh Hudson's, the Ridley Scott's of this world, they're basically, it's like, you know, 90% style and 10% content. Yes. Know, where Time Out, Time Out, if you look at Time Out, is basically a style vehicle. Um, but then why really, is that so? It's cause where is the opposition? I don't see much opposition. It's because it's money. Maybe you, is it? It's, well, it's all about money. I'm not, these, I'm not the same It's money one. these days, isn't it? It's money. Every, every, money. It's That's broken true. down to the basics and the essentials. That money, money and success. Money yes. and success and revolution sells. You well, you see, I them. come from a time, and if you look back at the old um, pre-cinema era, the late 50s and the 60s, it was an era where um, success didn't really count in the same way. And... Uh, if you look at the, uh, in the theatre, look at a theatre like the Royal Court, I think it was George <coughs> Dubin who said that what we asked for was the right to fail. If you well, have lost the day. Nobody it? looks for the right to fail now, do they? People are not interested in failure, yeah. they're interested in success. Mm. Well, I think, that, I think your films have succeeded. Uh, I don't see... It almost seems to me like you're saying I've, I've been forgotten and, I'm, and I don't want to do anything to, to stop myself being forgotten or 
to say, I mean, is, is that... Uh, well, you rather take it for granted that I should want to um, hit my head a bit more against a brick wall. Oh, I see, is that the way you see it? Yeah. Oh, no. It's like so shouting and nobody listening. Yes, I don't, I don't think that um, <clears throat> people are very interested in these things. Mm. You are, that's very nice, good. But you'd seem to me to be rather um, unique in this way. Maybe that's very good. I mean, that maybe gives you a, um, a point of view and a position. But you must meet other people who, who, like, your, who like your old films and think, and think they're really good. No, I mean, is it...? <laughs> who? Oh, people who come up in the supermarket and say, um, oh, I remember seeing if, what was it, 20 years ago, you know, and it, or more, 25 years ago, made a big impression on me. And you say, oh, good, that's very nice, thank you. So what? But that's, that's an interesting sort of subject within itself. Like, you know, if, if, if we talk to you, why, why maybe you're not consider that, you, you know, your films failed in, in that way? It's almost like you a, don't consider them a failure, obviously. Because no, the idea... Well, I don't think well, no, particularly I'll, a failure, no, but um, no. You, why you they feel, haven't been received feel, into yeah. the uh, corpus or the tradition of British cinema. Well, that perhaps you must tell me that. You don't ask me that. Why don't you tell me? Part, I think part of the your films were, were considered underground. At the, at underground. The, well, you were. You were not. You were not the mainstream British film movement in this What country. was the mainstream? It was the, the Michael Bol 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 Balkans and um, the MGMs who were making you know, the the. Uh, I mean, there, there were other people. I mean, the guy who made War Game, Peter Watkins. I mean. Yes. Well, what happened to him? He's, I think he's in Germany now, but he, he was told that 20,000 people commit suicide if war game was shown on TV. Yeah, well, what do you want me to say about that? That's rubbish, isn't it? Oh, obviously, yes. Yeah. And it was shown, it was premiered to people he didn't know in places he didn't know. Hmm. Well... And that, that became a very influential film in, 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 in quite a few sections, in spite of being... Influential? In, in the way it influenced people's views on the war. I mean, even it was shown eventually, but even then, with, with, with sort of a great preface about you know. Well, Peter Watkins, unfortunately, has always been a bit paranoid, doesn't he? You think so? Well, I've only met him the once. I didn't didn't have time to get impressions of that of his paranoid. Or well, not. would you say his work was a bit paranoid? Very well, it's apocalyptic, isn't it? He's very really want to make a film. Very on graphic. That subject. Yes. Obviously, he's like got a morbid interest with the end of the world. Well, what were his films? A privilege and a privilege, privilege. <coughs> privilege and the war games. Chief ones I remember. Privilege was very much about the way media manipulates. Yes, and it was not a success, was it? I don't mean just. Do you think it was artistically a success? Oh, I think it was. Yes. You do. Yes. I I I thought it was quite graphic in the way it, uh, so cynically outlined the way that people would behave and the way that the pop star was manipulated. I mean, someone, someone like Malcolm McLaren today would, wouldn't think twice about doing those kinds of things. No. But actually, he did make more films than that, didn't he? Yeah, I can't remember them offhand immediately. You should know them. I should know them, yes. I know. I, isn't, isn't I, I try and remember all these things. The thing is, for you, it, it's lived experience. For me, I have to read it all in books and try and remember it all. You know, it's, I'm constantly reading and trying to remember all these names and the films. Well, I agree that it's probably very difficult to see Peter Watkins' films. Uh, they're not shown, are they? Yeah, I mean, it's even difficult to see. Did he make Punishment Park? Yes, that's it, yes. He did. And then he made a film about, um, was it Munch? The uh, yeah, five months. Yeah. Norwegian artist. Mm. Have you ever, do you know anything about that? No, I don't. I've never no. seen it. Never managed to see it. But mm. I mean, just because you can't see them doesn't mean they aren't interesting. I, I mean, no. my, my, I made a little film for Central, and that got banned because it wasn't commercial enough. A little, just a little. Was, I mean, I, I'd be embarrassed to show it to somebody like you, to somebody like you. I, it you know, was it, why? But what was it? Uh, what was it? It, about? it was, it was uh, autobiography about life in Coventry. It was slightly wacky and taking the Michael out of um, travelling adverts and stuff. 
the people were laughing on that when it was shown. <laughs> but you know, when, when it got shown to Central's people, and now for it, and now it looks as though our art fund, our film art fund, is going to be virtually decided by Central on the basis that the richest art company in the country is going to take is going to decide who the, who this little bit of money goes to. That's the way it looks now. But uh, so I've been suffered a bit from being banned. But, Although you still try and hope to get it seen and still keep on working, I don't. I don't you know, yes. Obviously, I haven't. I haven't got the length of time that you are banging my head against this wall, as you put it. Well, I think, of course, that we were um, fortunate in the days of free cinema. <coughs> we did manage to make uh, quite an impact mm. with those films. Now, the problem I, I've often thought since then is that young filmmakers have never tried to emulate that. They've all tried to get into the system, haven't they? They all want mm. to get jobs in television. Yeah. Well, no, no, I wouldn't mm. say. Well, I, think, I think that's a bit unfair when I mean, you think of something like the Wednesday play. I mean, that did try. Yeah. Did try to, to be different and did try to challenge authority and something like Kathy Come Home and... Uh, oh, yes. ...Edna of any, any Woman and, and various stuff. Although it's, it's, I don't know, even as, even as, as late as 1984 with the boys from the black stuff. Did try to show. Well, that him. was very good. That was very good. Yes. Mm. yes. But how, how would you measure your your success though, in, in comparison to I don't know, to say if if you reckon you had had been successful in what you were trying to achieve? Well, I don't think I have been successful. And to use that word, I wouldn't use that word. I mean, I've. Um, but what, what would you what would you measure it in? Because obviously, it's not. You obviously don't measure this success in, in sort of monetary. Sort of no. worth. What makes you think I measure it at all? Well, it's just you're saying that you, you, you've somehow not not succeeded in this, this these ideals that you started out in. But well, if you like, for instance, that I I um, um I can't or wouldn't get money to make another film. No. That um, if I have tried, sent a script, which I wrote with David Sherwin to the BBC, it mm. was rejected. And that's a commonplace experience. So um, I, w I don't get a film made for Channel 4. They don't want me to make a film for them. BBC doesn't want me to make a film for them. Those established avenues are closed. But, um, you know, is this wow. broader, broader horizons, you know? It's like what it's, broader horizons? Well, it's always the, this, like, Europe and... Getting money from Germany and places like that, and France, and well, even. I mean, I, I would have to admit that I am not um, clever at getting money. <coughs> I don't think I have the talent of, shall we say, Derek Jarman. But even he doesn't perceive it as easy. He sees that his films were bought in part of a package, and he describes Channel Four as being the channel for adventurous commuters. Yeah, well, that was more or less his words. So he's pretty cynical about Channel 4, but he's still... I'm he's sure he is. But <coughs> I admire very much the way he's kept going. Mm. Yes. Well, couldn't you, couldn't you say that something like Sharman, or is he, he, then he's, he's cleverness, he's, he's seen a market, and he's manipulated he's manipulated because he was one of the first people in in the scene that he was he was looking at, so therefore he, he could basically write the rules for that scene which he was going into. Yeah, good for him. Yeah. But in the same way, you, when you were going into this sort of, sort of, you know, new, well, what, what you describe as a new form of cinema, could you, your, well, your, your group were, yeah, you look at the people you were with, Carol Rice, Tony Richardson, they all mm. went off and basically made, made films in America. Well, maybe, was that not, maybe not the next natural progression from what you were doing? Well, you mean I should have gone to America? Well, all the other, other people you worked well, yeah, with. But, you know, this is, these are questions that you should answer. Well, I didn't want you to go to America. Well, we, we, can only, we can only gather these things by talking to you and trying to... No, I think you, you, can, you can decide yourselves, can't you? You can yeah. use your own um, intelligence, such as it is. Can't you? Well, I can try, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So perhaps you should be telling me things rather than just asking me... Coming wanting in. me to um, answer all these questions. Yeah. Well, I, I would say personally, you're you're not not successful. 
Um, yeah, if, I, if, I went, if I went down to a, a bookshop and bought a book on, you know, 100 great directors, your name would probably be included in there. Possibly. It's always included. Unlikely. Well, I'd always, I've got two books where your, your name's mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. What are they? Um, one's called The 100 Great Movie Directors, which is an American one. I can't remember who it's by. One's there's British another recent one, by, 10 British by, by, um, The guy writes for oh, okay. um, well, you, you get listed in all the, in all the books of British film directors. Yeah, I, 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 th I, think, I think your success is more than you feel. I, I mean, it yeah, depends. I, I, it depends. I, I, I mean, to us, you're very... To us today, I mean, you have you're a very successful film director, but I, I mean, it depends what, 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 where you choose the mark to judge yourself it against. It does. I mean, when you say successful, I don't quite know what that means, really. I, well, I, mean, I simply know that I'm, I'm not making films. Yes, but for me, to make a Which, feature film at all would, would be a great success, you know. It would. Yeah, and, and well, I, I know what you're saying, because you feel frustrated, because you, you know, you've, you've got this, this, this skill craft that you say, and you, you can know, like, you, you know, it's like a... It's like a painter who can, you know, who no longer has canvases to paint on. That's right. Yeah, you, know, you feel feel frustrated. I, I can see your, you know, sort of frustration there. But I seem like looking looking back over what you've done, I would say what you've done is successful simply by the fact that we're here talking to you now. Would well, I'm glad you say that, of, but don't expect me to say it. Yeah. Perhaps you've got to understand why I don't say it. You don't see making what is it three feature films, four feature films as being successful? I mean, to me, that's very successful. I, yeah. I think it's incredible. I, I, I mean, I oh. think that those films would not be made today. Exactly. Yeah, but that, I mean, could, could you not say the same about Stagecoach? Would that be made today? What do you think? Probably. Probably. You think that would be made today? But I don't know. I mean, you, maybe not, because you have to say that at the end of his life, of course, Ford couldn't get, couldn't raise money to make a film. Mm. I mean, every, every age has its own films, you know, and you have to kind of adapt with the times, I think. But I can see why I can see why you say as well you like, you would like to have, like to have been somebody like Ford in America because basically he was making when he was making films he was making them one after the other because I I like America and sort of Hollywood of the thirties and forties because basically it was a community that basically existed in almost like a seclusion from the rest of the world they just did what they wanted to do within within their own system and they made films after films after films okay they may be they were very dictated by the people around the studios but well, you have to think then that. The cinema was the the popular medium of entertainment. It isn't any longer. Well, no, I don't agree with that. I mean, the, the moving image per se is still one of the main. I mean, even even the moving image now in in, in the little games, it's still a moving image. So the moving image is still it's it's just, it's just not the moving image isn't particularly seen at the cinema now. It's seen in people's homes, on video cassettes and mm -hmm. and so forth. So. I mean, you only have to look at the proliferation of video shops and so on to know that the moving image is such. It, I think it's more. I think it's that the mode of viewing that moving image has changed. Well, that implies also that the whole mode of financing that moving image has changed. Well, some of them are financed by sell through videos, but I mean, I, I think I think the video, isn't it for some films the video sales are bigger than the theatrical sales. Seem to remember. Well, go on. Well, right. the, give me some instances. Well, I can't remember the names I've had. Well, you should be able to remember. Well, Pretty Woman's an example of that. That was a film that did exceptionally well on video, but most oh yes, it was very, it was a big commercial success. But also as well the video the video market. But then again, I I I, I see all films whatever 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 it's about. All all film I see is is, is a form of fantasy because there's no way film in any way could ever be reality simply by the medium in which it is. You know, so I, I don't see, you know, besides messages that can be, you know, deemed by intellectuals from films, I don't see any other other great, you know, difference between... So you mean you come here with a message of um, hope, have you, for me? You don't, well, it's what, what you can get out from what I'm... Why should I get anything out of what you're saying? I, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to... I'm questioning the whole, your attitude, really. Yes, I know, it's... it's, it's, it's... And suggesting these are questions that you should ask yeah. yourself. Yeah. Well, this, well, this is the whole point of us, us doing this. I'm develop try, trying to set, set up this. To, to assess what, what... This is what came is. over quite strongly, that you had the, 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 these thoughts about ways of doing things, and that it might be interesting to people to put them over, not just not just about your films per se, although you know, we, we would be interested in showing bits of 
every day except Christmas, cutting with New Covent Garden Market and that kind. And it's all been done before, but, but we'd like to develop that. Well, so well that's that's one idea. That my, you'd have to do something that might interest me. Yes, I know. We're, we're trying. We're trying. <laughs> well, fine. But well, yeah, it's I'm fine. not sure it is right to expect me to do it. Yes, no, I, I know. Yeah. Okay. Well, I oh, we're not expecting. Said, why don't you turn that off for a moment? Because I'm going to have a cup of coffee. Yeah, I mean, it's, in, it's interesting to talk to somebody who asks you questions back in the way you do and makes you think about things. Uh, I've not, not had much of that from um, people. I mean, you know, there's, there's limited amounts of people that you can, you can meet who are available to talk, talk to. I mean, you, You're I mean, probably you are, right. You are remarkably accessible, which is what to tell us. Yes, I'm beginning to regret it. You are. But go on. I'm oh, sorry. You're here now. No, no, don't. But you're here now. Oh, I do. Go on. Go on, you, John. Go on, say something. Um, I think you've stopped Alan there, I think. Oh, you must know what you want answers to, presumably. Do you know? Oh, yes. I mean, I, I've got... Uh, yes. I've got this list of things to talk about. But, uh, I mean, we seem to have... <coughs> Forgotten where we started from, really. But, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it was, was was to go back and to, to hark back onto what something. Onto, you know, I'm trying to think of the best best thing to say to try and convince you to. To what? Well, you, obviously, you have to make us work to gain your to gain your help. That's some degree. Um, well, I'm not altogether sure, uh, except except that you seem to want me to do this programme for you. Yeah. But I think you've got to have an idea of what exactly you want or want to say. Mm. Right. Well, that's, that's part of the idea of, the, of today. We just sort of... Well, what we're trying to do is sort of build pictures and grounds which we can build on so we can see which way we're, where we're going. Because... Like, well, I, I personally feel look, looking at if, if we would make a film, it wouldn't be. I, I don't see any point in looking, looking back on, basically before, because you know, what's the point? You could just have you, 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 you saying one or two things, show a clip of a film, one or two things, and it'd just be superfluous almost. Um, what we're trying to do is really get to the, you know, basically, you know, what are you all about, basically? What we, you know, what, how is, how have you evolved? Um, yeah. What am I all about? I suppose I am expecting you to have some idea of your own. Of what? Well, uh, of I, what I, I, I see. Rather than just saying to me, what are you about? Yeah, because I, after all, when one does make films, one doesn't necessarily question what one is doing. One works by perhaps instinct, instinct yes. intuition, yes. by um, some kind of poetic uh, impulse. <clears throat> Every day except Christmas was after all made uh, out of um, feeling mm. and um, perhaps you can interpret that feeling. feeling. Can you? Well you're feeling for the, for the time and trying to put over to some degree uh, what, what the, the class of the people or the... Or the uh, maybe I mean... Uh, because I think it's impossible for anybody else, if you've actually made something for them to actually see it the way in which you've seen it when you've made it. So other people will see it only as the finished product. They won't have seen it the way in which you've gone through it. They won't have seen why you thought to do this, why you thought... To... They'll just see the end product. And what happens to tendencies, they tend to put people on pedestals. To, oh, yeah, you, you did this, it looks quite good. Oh, you know, you, you must know what you, you're talking about, basically. Um, which is like, you know, Time Out is, you know, a classic example of that, you know, it's almost like some people at Hero Worships, other people at, you know, completely... Oh, I can destroyed. tell you the name now of uh, John Schlesinger's film, it was called Terminus. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Terminus. Yep. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, Terminus is, um, has been a popular and acceptable film, I suppose because it is a perfectly orthodox way of looking at 
an institution like mm. a railway station and looking at the people. Mm. Whereas, I suppose, I mean, I didn't think particularly, but I suppose that the um, view of Every Day Except Christmas is not exactly an orthodox way of looking at working class people. Is it? I don't well, know. Well, it's poetic to some... I mean, uh, it's poetic, but it also adheres to some degree to classic film rules in the way that you show one person talking from the, the left and the next person from the right and that kind of thing. I mean, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I, it's not... I haven't seen it in quite a few times. I wouldn't say it's documentary film in any sense of the word because it's too... The way it's... A lot of it's set up, it's very contrived in the way it's, it's perceived. I know it's supposed to be showing real events, but the way, in, well, basically to the fact you said, yeah, obviously you've got somebody there standing with a camera and shooting it with lights and everything. You've obviously had to contrive a lot of the action, so it's not, it's not document, it's not, it, well, there's no such thing as real documentary because you, you've got to film Direct it. Direct cinema doesn't exist. I don't believe it. Direct cinema, that's quite, that's different from yes, documentary. I know, I know, well. I would say the film is documentary because, uh, um, None of the characters and none of the actions are invented. Yeah. Um, obviously, obviously, yeah, obviously, the real people, but inevitably they, inevitably they are influenced by, by you know the actors. Yeah, because you're standing, you're standing there shooting them, so therefore you're obviously either, in some cases, maybe intimidating them or no, not intimidating. Well, is that intimidated. observable? Do you feel they look intimidated? Um, no, no, I, I didn't. But, not, uh, not, not if you made the film correctly, because you would have, you would have manipulated the image in such a way that you'd have removed the parts that would have made the people. You would, have, you know, it's all, all about film. The question of filmmaking: you take bits of bits of life, cut it together, and create a sequence of events. I suppose a lot of what you're saying I don't understand. I mean, I think it's perfectly clear that the characters in that film are not intimidated. I wouldn't say they were, no. No. Um, but to get them to behave naturally is very difficult to do. I mean, I'm. If you get, if I, okay, I've been out and shot stuff, and you, and as soon as you turn, you, they behave perfectly normally. But as soon as you turn the camera on, they become this sort of stilted. Well, oh, that's, that's up to you. That's a question of talent. Yeah, well, you, you can try, you can try, and mm. and part of it seems to be to make them not aware that the camera's there, and and to try and get. Yeah, or, or I mean, it depends if they are doing work that they normally do anyway. Um, then they are likely not to be bothered. They just get on with their work. And a lot of the thing about everybody except Christmas is that people were too occupied in what they were doing so, so to take much notice. Yeah. And right. um, obviously my or our relationship with them was a good one. And uh, they didn't feel tempted to be self-conscious or intimidated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But without actually being there and actually the person, who, as I was saying before, unless you're actually the person who made the film, you'll never know these things. This is the way that other people perceive images. It's the way they interpret them. I don't know really what you mean. I mean, if you look at a film, you get an impression. Mm. Yeah. And you can make your own judgment. And you can judge whether or not those people are self-conscious. Self-consciousness communicates itself. Mm. Yes. And at times they are, I don't know whether you call it self-conscious, but they look at the camera and in a perfectly, I would say, unselfconscious way. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't worry them. Yes. So what are you saying? I don't know. You just you, you, yeah. batted batted the ball back to my court with a with a a, 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 a winning a winning home home uh, match point there. I think. Good. Yeah. We, we're trying, we're trying. Obviously. What are you trying to do? What are we trying to do? Trying to what make... I'm really saying to you is that you must perhaps think harder yes. about what exactly you are trying to do. do. Well, trying to make a film about someone to us is, is a, who's a famous filmmaker. I mean, you Not are. famous. No, I think you really have to qualify that. You'd have to... Famous I don't in... quite know what you mean by it. Well, well, well known then, a well known film. And, but... Well, whatever that means. As I say, I remember you talk about um, 
film directors. Uh, this chap called Joel Findlay, is it, or someone who's written a book? I remember being in Smith's about two years ago, and he came up to me and he said, oh, hello, and um, he said, oh, I've just um, um, cut you out of the book I'm writing. I said, oh, really? And he said, yes, there wasn't room. <laughs> so that gave me a feeling of... Um, Rejection. Of he was an idiot. Yeah. Well, obviously rejection, but they thought he was a complete fool. To cut you out for that, really? Well, be no, obvious. I mean, to come up and talk to me like that, you know. Yeah. Just say, piss off again, don't you? Right, yes, obviously, yeah. yeah, yeah. Obviously, what he was trying to do is make himself, he, himself feel... More important than perhaps important than he was really. In, you yes. know, he's obviously got an inferiority complex with himself, so he obviously does it to people who you know he, can, he, who he conceives as being, you know, have a public. Um, yeah. A filmmaker's film about a filmmaker. This is what you want to do. Something like that. Yeah. All right. Fine. That, I mean that 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 well, that's, I mean, that's the really make you think of. It. I mean, this is like this is it's like being faced with, with the West Midlands. Uh, with one of these huge forms you get, and has to be the, answer the questions that you wouldn't re really take considered time to answer instantly, um, because you know, I mean, because you are <laughs> sorry. I don't hesitate. I mean, yeah. It's all right. Um, yes. Uh, well, a filmmaker's film about a filmmaker. About well, I think in order to do that, you have to show that you have an idea about the filmmaker you're talking to. Well, I've tried. I, I, I mean, I've, I've read virtually all of the I'm getting the impression at the moment. That's but fine. I think, for one thing, you, you've changed, you obviously changed quite a bit. I, I don't think you've ever said these things at the time you made it, for instance. I have no idea. I shouldn't think so. I have no idea. No. I think you would but have been I, more hopeful. You must have had... You hopeful? Well, I would say um, there are two things. First of all, you have to realise that uh, if a filmmaker wants to be... Um, shall we say, poetic, that inevitably his films are going to be personal. Well, yes, I, make th I try to make personal films myself. That's right. So a film, if, you, if I made a film like Every Day Except Christmas, it does have certain attitudes, but it's also a kind of self-portrait. Mm, yes, in the, in the, there's something of you in there. Absolutely, and the things that I think are important, or the things yes, that I think yes. are good or attractive yeah. and of course what happens then is that you get often a certain ambiguity in a film whether it's that or say a film like If and the ambiguity consists of both a kind of um, if you like a social attitude mm. but also a very personal attitude and it's up to you to be able to distinguish between them yeah I mean it, it's to make that distinction. I mean, I'm, I'm, work, I'm, I'm quite, I'm, you know, I come from a very working class background for a start, so in, inevitably, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I, um, I, went to, I went to a comprehensive school, not a public school, for instance, so no, right. my background is, is coloured by that, and, and um, my outlook... Well, where do you come from? Coventry. Coventry. Oh, pretty dismal place, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's, uh, they went to Jarrah in the 30s, they're coming to Coventry in the... Oh, um, really? Yeah, you know, it's that sort of idea now, yeah. Jarrow? Well, you know, it, it, to film the Depression, now they film our oh. council estates and right. you know, say they're all going off to America or wherever they're going. Uh, yeah, I, I made a little, as I say, a little video about Coventry. Now, that, that had a lot of, of what was happening to me in Coventry in it. So, um, but it's, it's difficult, I mean, for, for one thing, if you're going to make a film about not, not to be sentimental and not to be patronising. Um, to some degree. So, I mean, it must be more difficult for you than it would be for me because because of your your class background to some degree and your, the privilege, I would have said, I would have thought, I would have expected. More difficult for me. More difficult, yes. What, to make a film like... Well, yeah, but then, then about the working class than it would be for me, but... Um, um, but you succeed, obviously. I don't know. Have I ever made a film about the working class? Yes, I mean, well, I mean, this... What, for instance? Well, every day except Christmas, undoubtedly, is, is about the, what is... No, it's a film about the working class, but you could say it's a film about... Uh, you can either say about workers, or you can say it's a film about men doing a job. Mm, yeah. Um, 
when you say to bring back to the working class, the you're working. really um, giving well, an aim, I think, that's probably broader than it than is there. Set out to be. Well, for instance, I mean, I, I, if I tried to set to set out to make a film about uh, the people in the city and the way they live, it would it would it would have a very biased. It would have quite a negative edge to it, I think, for instance. But you, mm. the, the, the um, but to cross that boundary and, and to try and work with the people and um, and to represent. Well, look, you're quite you're perfectly right in saying that obviously the uh, my uh, social background is not the same as the background of the people in Covent Garden. Yes. Um, I would perhaps have thought that my work would show a, a quite a considerable. Um, sympathy, if you like, yes, feeling yes. for, intuitive feeling for workers. Well, human beings, maybe, human beings. maybe, and perhaps one of the strengths is that uh, it isn't um, very subconsciously about workers. I mean, and that's why uh, that film was attacked by some um, socialists. Mm. Or middle class socialists who would complain because it wasn't about the wages that these people were that's right, paid. Yes. Yes, it right. wasn't about strikes in Covent Garden. Mm. And it's quite true, it isn't. No. It doesn't aim to be. Which they felt so was. They felt it was. Socialist, socialist thing to do. Yes. And uh, obviously, whatever is uh, poetic or lyric about the film escaped them completely. Hmm. Now, I would have to know, I don't know what you received from the film. Well, my, for a start, my, my view of the film is, is, is tainted by the, by the age of it. Uh, by, um, it's black and white, and it's from an era which is, which is seen as um, the good old, almost as the good old days, you know, when you could walk down the streets without being mugged and this kind of thing, uh, to some degree. Uh, and it comes over... So think of a so think of a bygone era, but to look past that and to talk about the filmmaking, uh, it's it's a representation of of workers, as you say, undoubtedly, and it's um, a filmic representation, obviously. So I'm trying to different. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but obviously you have to pick what you shoot, and if you go down there today, I'm. Yes, you're perfectly right, and I suppose that it's up to you. And then, uh, if you're going to be a critic, or well, I don't aim to be a critic. I, I, I'm well, what much, are you? Much more interested in being a filmmaker. A filmmaker will presumably have some kind of opinions. Yes. Some kind of. Yes. Uh, well, then, I mean, you you'd have to look at it and say, well, you can see the kind of things that interested me to shoot. Or the well, kind of people. Yeah. I mean, you were a bit influenced by the flower market. Obviously, flowers are a bit... But, uh, I think it's more a human question a human than a question, question about flowers. I mean, flowers and vegetables, yes, that's what that market was about. But in terms of uh, human beings, is there a... There's a portrayal of, of uh, camaraderie and, uh, and workers together, and, and, and in, a, in a common... Um, not almost in a common cause, but not common quite. pursuit. Common, common pursuit, yes. Yes. Um, and and we want work is necessary, you know. And uh, I think there's there's lines from um, Eric from Carol Rice's film which come to mind. But, uh, work work is good for those that can get it. Or, or work, work. Everyone needs work to give to fit to give them. So, because I mean, if a lot of my friends are unemployed in, in for the media now, mm-hmm. it's become a lot like acting. You know, you spend a lot of time resting, as it were, uh, rather than working. And um, work, work gives you a certain feeling of worth. Yes. You? Yes. I mean, the the words at the end of every day except Christmas are quite specific. Maybe they're too specific an attempt to um, point a moral. Mm. There is rather an attempt to point a moral. It may be a mistake, I don't know. Um, 
I think morals to some degree are a dirty word today. But, uh... Probably it is. But uh, I know that, for instance, if I'd been totally free, I probably wouldn't have had a commentary on every day except Christmas. Like, probably like, didn't need uh... one. But because we hope to get it released, generally released, we put a, had to put a commentary on it. And it was generally released. But, of course, I mean, a documentary doesn't get particularly well released, you know. Humphrey Jennings had a commentary imposed on Listen to Britain, of course. The, well, not a commentary, but this Canadian guy at the front. Is, oh, yes. No, there isn't a commentary on Listen to Britain. No, no. But, but he did have there that imposed on There is on Timothy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Written by Ian Poster. I'm, I'm, the, more I, the more I work on, on films at the moment, the more I come to think of the purest form of cinema is the silent cinema. To some degree, probably is. Yes. I mean, you see adverts today, and the ones that really work are the ones that don't rely on the commentary. I've had mm. have things like you see someone puts something on the scales, and it goes into the red, and it's obvious that he's got because it becomes the visual becomes an icon to some degree. Mm. You, so you can work in terms of in some, some icon. Way. That's a fashionable word, isn't it? Well, yeah. that's a word. Yeah. Modern day. Who? Modern, modern day sort of. Uh, yes, it's sort of time out stuff. Well, whatever. I won't apologise, but yeah. it's the word that uh, it's the word that it's it's an, 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 an icon. An icon to me is some, is a vis, is a is a visual that's instantly recognisable, that, and especially in adverts that instantly communicates a whole a whole load of things like this is this is such and such a family and they're in such and such a state and whatever and this has happened to them and, and that and instantly in the way that a picture paints a thousand words they say you know that old that very old mm. very old saying um it's a computer generation term isn't it icon so it's oh, yeah. generated by window by, icon maybe by, by point computers, and select I don't by know, computers yeah. yes well, and sort of red big red big university uh, arts courses i suppose so it's, you know, it's... Yeah. Yeah, but, but, um... I've lost where I was now. Well, I don't know. Am I giving you what you want? Well, yes. We, you, 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 you are... We, you're, you're something. I'm finding... I've, I'm... Tr- <clears throat> oh, it's usable, yes. It's, it's your views. It's, it's harder work for me than I, I expect. See, obviously, you're... I mean... Um, for me, the cinema, you know... I'm, totally addicted to images and you try and make things. Well, I'm afraid that you're taking on something which is, uh, um, if you like, intellectual or rational, so it can't be just in terms of images. Yes, right. So you have to think about it in terms of um, in thought. Or well, yes, yes. Yeah. Would you say that's a criticism of the modern generation, is that they don't, they don't think about what they're seeing, they just accept? Well, very likely. I don't know much about the modern generation, but uh, um, but mainly. Well, I think not just just in general modern life. Yes, that uh, um, people there's a certain passivity, probably uh, created and encouraged by television. Yes. Yeah. Your your film is in comparison to say other films made around the time. So I was saying, like, you know, things like the, the Miss Marple films and you know, the Margaret Rutherford thing. Is that your films made? They made an attempt to try and make people think about what they were watching, which well, is, which is an, which some people could say is an unfortunate mistake to assume that people would, would try and want to think about something because one of the reasons they go to the cinema is to try and forget. And unfortunately, you're saying, well, well yeah, I think you're about what right. you're saying. Yes, I think it uh, it is a great mistake to think that people want to think. It was a mistake, if you like, that Brecht made. Um, because Brecht, um, you've heard of Brecht, haven't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not that, not that bad. Well, you know, Brecht did uh, hope that he could make a kind of theatre that would make people think. Hmm. But it was a mistake, because people don't want to think. They, people want to be um, entertained, don't they? Yeah. And that goes just as much for the working class as for the middle class. But this, this, this film you did recently on John Ford, what, 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 how, you know, just looking from your point of view, because you didn't actually direct this, no. what did you actually think of it as a film? Well, it, we'd have to call it a programme. A programme, a programme. I thought it was surprisingly good. 
considering all the difficulties and the limitations that would exist, I thought it was surprisingly good. In what, the portrayal of the information, the... In the portrayal of the man and uh, <coughs> the um, outline of a career and um, giving an impression of these films as being the product of an individual imagination or sensibility. But you and think, was John Ford. Do you think that film that made you think about John Ford and actually question more than maybe what was what was given to you? What was given what was given to me? The information about John Ford. Basically it was like you start at the beginning, it gives you information about John Ford and at the end you have it, it forms an opinion in your mind of what John Ford is, but does it actually say to you, does it question about John Ford? Does it question John Ford, whether he was different to other filmmakers of his, of his time or his day, did he actually make you think? Well, I think within the limitations of a television programme, yes. I mean, you know you're making a film for BBC Omnibus, and therefore it can't be too highfalutin. Um, but I think, granted, there's... Um, yes, granted there's limitations. I think it did pretty well. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't make any greater claims for it, but I think it, it wasn't like Barry Norman. Which is basically sort of like preaching to people and it's like, I don't think this film is any good, do not go and see it. It's, I mean, that sort of... It is, it's based on personality too. Yeah. You know, people thinking that um, Barry Norman is very smart and very clever, and more mm. clever than the people who made the films. Well, it's easy when you're editing, isn't it, and you can go over and you've got auto cue and it's, you know... Isn't that the isn't that the critic though? Isn't that the I mean, isn't that the the argument? The one thing about TV is it's easy to look clever, isn't it? If you've got an auto cue and it's got yes, I suppose it is. Yes, but I also, don't like television. I it's a disaster. Yeah. But isn't that the the argument against critics that you know a critic is somebody who sits there and basically can have no comprehension of the medium he's discussing, but but can basically destroy two and a half years of work in five sentences. Yes, because the the. Uh, um, the critic, you have to remember, first of all, the critic is a journalist, whether in a paper or in television. And he's got to um, succeed as an entertainer, and he's got to succeed by making people think that he is um, clever. And as you, know, as you imply there, more clever than the people who made the work, yes. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot of the people that talk about films today, especially if you read... Sight and sound wouldn't know why any of a pig sink from another if it bit them on the leg, you know. And uh, do you read sight and sound? Well, yeah. I mean, there's there's little there's not a lot around to read if you. No, there isn't. No, I agree. There's very there's, there uh, seems but, to be a lack of anything written by filmmakers. Well, filmmakers on the whole don't write. But you did. I mean, you. Yes, that's where in that respect uh, exceptional. Because you were a writer originally. I mean, I've you? got a pile about that high stuff for you. Right, which I I tried tried to read and remember. Does it do any good? Does it do me any good? I think studying people who've made films gives you ideas about ways to approach things. Uh, certainly, Eisenstein at the moment I'm reading a lot about. Oh, I can't read Eisenstein. I can't understand it. Can you? To some degree, yeah. Very difficult. I think. But so coming coming back to what we're saying about critics, though, it's it's. It's, do you feel that maybe that's why? Would you maybe blame at the time people who were who were who were in the establishment looking at your your films at the time for their sort of like you know if I, I can't I can't remember what Barry Norman said about the Wales of August but no idea but people like him who would say have seen If or Oh Lucky Man would you maybe say that 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 was part of the because maybe you made them think when they went to the cinema that they maybe told the masses that this is a film you should not see, you know that sort of thing. They 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 felt uncomfortable with your work. Well, they may feel it's uncomfortable if they if they identify themselves with the um, established order of things, mm -hmm. which presumably anybody working for the BBC does. You couldn't really hold down a job with the BBC and be a radical, could you? Not really. Well, yeah. I mean, Ken Loach and uh, I'll try. Well, he doesn't work for the BBC. Well, does I mean, he used to, but uh, I mean, today. Well, I think, yes, Ken is a radical, yes. Mm. Uh, 
really <coughs> doesn't work within the BBC anymore. Anymore. Yeah. No. But. Uh, well, you, but you, you were a radical. You, you, you were regarded, certainly when you made it, as being a radical. Yes, I suppose so. Yes. Um, well, I probably still am regarded as a radical. Yes, I'm sure you are. But you're liable to say things that people find uncomfortable. Yes, right. But yeah. fact, isn't that a generally a challenging nature, though? You, you, you feel that, you know, um, things need to be examined, maybe. You know, you well, it limits you, you know, because the, uh, I would say the uh, intellectual standard of our society, of Britain, is pretty low. Yeah. As you say, I don't think much of um, any film criticism that's written. Mm. No. That's judging by your own high, very high standards. Are they? Well, I mean, oh, oh. having seen your articles in the past, they were, I mean, they were better than most of what appears in science. How, how well do you take Good. criticism, though? How well do you? Hmm? How well do you take criticism? Would you say? How well do I take criticism? Yeah. Well, I, I don't think I've ever had criticism that I would regard as of much value. Who, who would you say would would you you know if, if they looked at your films and said well look Lindsay I, you know, I don't don't think maybe this this scene worked as well as it could be or maybe this scene didn't work who would you your your views you know who, who would influence your views who would it have to be well I can only say someone I respected somebody like John Ford if, if he had seen oh, him. Ford I mean well I think it's perfectly true that you're more likely to get um, useful criticism from artists than from critics. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't generally inquiring about film. I was thinking of other 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 directors, mm. such as say, say if Tony Richardson and, or uh, Carol Rice. Of well, you know, now and, you're you're really just talking about them as people. I mean, Tony uh, was certainly an intelligent person, and uh, but I know that if you like, neither Tony nor Carol Rice really understood or particularly liked the kind of films that I latterly made because they didn't share my... Um, no viewpoint. No, they didn't. Mm. So obviously for us we've got to try and put your viewpoint over as strongly as we can. If we don't well, you have to understand it. Yes, well, I'll start. Yes. Yes. I see what you're trying to say, yes. I mean, I see what you're saying, yes. That's true. For us to try and make a film about you, you want to feel you that you're being I represented. Yes, I don't you're know being you're represented. Capable. Are you capable of making a film about me? Well, I rather hoped I was. Did you? Oh yes, but I don't, obviously you don't feel so. But so. well, I I don't really know. I think it depends if you really feel that you have either understanding or sympathy with what I've tried to to do. Mm. I don't know. Do you feel you have? Well, I thought I had some understanding, certainly of your films as they were in the 60s, the, the things you put over. I mean, the thing is, you've changed quite a bit since then. I mean, you, all, the, all, all that's written about you in your articles are from that era. So it's a question of knowing, knowing almost knowing two Lindsay Andersons, the Lindsay Anderson then and the Lindsay, Lindsay Anderson now. Probably. Would you, would you say you're, you're, you're a reactionary? No, no. Come on, John, please. <laughs> no, would I say I was a reactionary? Well, I hope I react against false ideas or um, progressive cliches. And you think that's phony? I hope so. I certainly don't think I'm a... Uh, um, an all-accepting, what, liberal or um, progressive. I mean, so there, it, were, there were some things worth preserving. There yeah, are some things worth preserving well, in the establishment. I should imagine. Yeah. What do we mean by the establishment? All these things have to be defined. You know, the trouble is that a question like that is so general, yeah. it's terribly difficult to answer. I don't want to say it's naive, but I might. And perhaps it's more interesting if you tell me if you think I'm a reactionary. 
Well, maybe I, I asked you for your action just to see what your action was. Well, probably, but um, you have to oh, you were commit yourself to sometimes. Le less of a revelationary than you were. Uh, I think that's probably true of um, everybody as they get older. You think they shift to the right? As they know more about the world. Hmm? Shift to the right as they get older. Well, perhaps they have form a clearer idea of what revolution actually consists of. Hmm. Because, I mean, to me, the student politics are all, are all sorts of very wishy-washy, very idealistic. Um, what are? Student politics. Oh, um, I'm sure they are, yes. I, mean, I, I ran Cobb Poly's CND for what, at one point, and, mm. and Cobb, everyone had accounts with Bike Lloyds and Barclays and so on, but to CND had to be right on. You had to have an account with somebody that had no connections with South Africa, regardless of... of of the fact that all the people around the table had accounts with, and that, that just about summed up student politics. So I ended up keeping 300 quid in a sock underneath me desk. No, right. Which was <laughs> so you end up using the word naive? Well, yes, yes, you end up using the word naive, yes. I'm sure, yes. But you know, I think as you get older, because you don't know this yet, but as you get older, you do form a more, um, shall I say, sceptical idea of human nature. And obviously my attitude towards human nature is not particularly simplistic. There's a scene in um, Oh Lucky Man, which was cut out of, uh, I think, the screen version, but uh, it's in the television version where the uh, Mick arrives at a Salvation Army meeting and the man talks about original sin. You probably don't remember that, do you? I've, I've, I've seen that one. I've seen it, yes. I've seen it. That's right. I've seen it on, I've got it on TV. I've well, it. I think that uh, he's perfectly right. I think that um, original sin is a valid concept. Yes. Oh, well, <laughs> would, you go, would you go further than that and believe in the devil, for instance? I mean, that does... Only metaphorically. Only metaphorically. Mm. Could you not say maybe the character in you know, Our Lucky Man was naive to start with? He certainly was, yes. Of course he was. I and mean, then he was like, it was a progression, a journey. It's basically. Oh, undoubtedly. It is. I mean, he set out to be successful. And in the second half of the film, after he's been in prison, uh, uh, he tries to find out how to be good. Mm. And he ends up. Um, I hope simply accepting what life is in a zen-like way. In a nutshell, that's probably what the story of O Lucky Man is about. Mm. Progression. Oh, certainly. It's a journey. Yes, mm. it is. An English road movie. To call the phrase. If you like. If you like. A road movie, oh dear. You hate these it. modern phrases, don't you? I would say cliches. And buddy movies and that kind of... Oh, God. What was that? Yes. I, you know, I, I, I copied that out of somewhere. What was it? Um, something was described as a buddy buddy movie. I forget what the film was now, but um, there's these cliches, aren't there? Time out cliches. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's like categorising, you know, things to be put in and make neat packages and put on the shelf so people can accept. No, yeah, right. Acceptance. It's like if you say, oh, this film is a road movie, then people go, oh, right, I know what to expect. That's right. Buddy, buddy movie. Have you seen any films recently which you'd say you either enjoyed or completely hated? I'm afraid I've been, I'm very lazy about going to films now. I did go and see um, Strictly Ballroom. Quite rather enjoyable. Yes. And I saw Peter's friends. I saw it legs there and thought it must be really horrible, but uh, Which was that? Peter's friends. What what's your actual I don't think it's really horrible. It's not I I found it well oh, very enjoyable. It was well crafted. Um right. I thought maybe it was a bit overly sentimental but I, I thought for the, for, you know, for the 
market that they're aiming at, but then we come back to what the acceptance and what they were looking at. The well, exactly, but if you see a film like that, if you're asked to judge it, you don't start talking about the market that they were um, in search of. I know that what you can say to Kenneth Branagh I got um, the Evening Standard Award. What's that mean? Oh, no measure of success, I would thought. Hmm? Measure of critical success, I would have thought. Oh, I mean, you, I mean you, won, you won, wasn't was it the Palm d'Or, wasn't it? For, wasn't if, it? yes. Well, that, wasn't, that was a measure of success, as well. Well, life was different then, wasn't it? Yeah, this, 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 anyway, this, is the thing, to... this is the thing I come back to, that essentially there's two Lindsay Andersons. There's the Lindsay Anderson of the 60s and there's the Lindsay Anderson of today. Well, I should hope so. You wouldn't expect them to be the same, would you? No, no, but I mean, they're, they're, they're very different outlooks. You know, I, to me, well, I can, I can you read... You will discover when you get older that your feelings and opinions change. Yeah, because I, I can read and, and look at the films and prepare for the Lindsay Anderson of then. Mm. But to prepare for the Lindsay Anderson of today, only by really meeting you. But uh, I'm, I'm trying to talk to you in, in the... What, what do you... What do you, what, what do you yeah, well, it's, it's difficult to, yeah. What would you say you enjoy now, then? What's, what, what are your enjoyments in life? What, what, you know, what gives you pleasure? Probably not much. I mean, one sees through the things that the world uh, considers to be um, worthy of note by going and see in the cinema. The other evening I went to see Dracula, mm -hmm. which has had enormous press coverage and huge success, and it's not really very enjoyable. Yeah, I, I'd agree with you on that. I'll find it. One. Oh, I just found it very, um, I don't know, I just found a lack of substance. It seemed to like rattle along at such an immense pace that it missed out what it was about. Um, which well, was about, right. more importantly, which the thing it was about, which I think it missed, was the people. It was about the people rather than the string of events. It's a rotten story. Well, have you read the original, the original book? I can't remember whether I have actually read it. Uh, Probably never finished it, I don't know. Yeah. I did have it. Mm. I saw the original film. Nosferatu. Was it Nosferatu? Oh, no, well, Dracula. 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 Dracula's book, Dracula. Mm. But would, would you say that gives you, you, you pleasure and enjoyment these days in sort of <coughs> simple, simple things such as you know, meeting people, um, seeing old friends? You mean talking to you? <laughs> no, well, well, we're not old friends. <laughs> no. <laughs> Now, what are you doing with that tape, by the way? Oh, I'm just getting it ready to... Oh, God, you're going to do another one, are you? Oh. All right. Well, as long as you'll... As long as, you know, until you tell us to... Have you be... got questions to ask? Well, well, I mean, we are covering a lot of what I intended. I asked you questions last time, and uh, it's more a question of John giving me a rest in between. <laughs> having, right. Having... Uh, but it, uh, what, what, what I think we're doing here is building a be better picture than better picture. You know, if, we, if we'd have contrived um, a series of questions and basically well, if you contrived if we'd have contrived a series of questions, questions you, would have, you would have said to us well, well what, what do you think the answers are to these because I, I know you're going to ask me what do you think when I come yeah. up with a question from last time right so I mean, we've done interviews yeah. before no, uh, and, and, and you are you are the most challenge you've been the most challenging person to try and interview um uh, who I mean, else have you interviewed? Oh, uh, Oswald Morris, Walter Lassley. Oh. Uh, several. Not not directors, not that. Uh, no. No, but other people. Uh, I mean, it's and the, other people yeah. in the past. Well, it's like uh, I, I did a thing last week with, I don't know, with Freddie Francis. Oh, yes. And, and John talked to him. Freddie, Freddie, well, I know Freddie quite well, but Freddie will. He'll. You, you ask him something, he'll say, like, well, you know, what did you think of working with Martin Scorsese on character and that's all you need to say and it'll cue him off and he'll spout for half an hour about what he likes and didn't like with, with about Kate Fear but that's because he likes to be sort of like you know self-perpetuating person he can you know mm. he, he, he feels that he likes to talk to you like that but you obviously feel like you want to, you mm -hmm. want to get something back maybe from the people you're not, you're not talking to sort of sheep I hope not no obviously not no um, no I mean Freddie isn't um Particularly an intellectual, is he? But he's mm. a nice fellow. Yes. 
I mean, I've, I've been accused of being over intellectual in the way I talk to people, believe it or not. By who? Oh, by uh, Alan Lovell from up to other people. Alan Lovell? Yeah, you know, he used to live in your. Good heavens, Alan Lovell. I haven't seen him for years. Yeah. Where is he now? He lives in Coventry. What's he do? Teaches media at Warwick University. Frightening. I think Alan could have been a nice person, actually, if he hadn't. I don't know. But he was determined to be an intellectual, wasn't he? Is but, he still? Yes, but he accuses me when I talk about film of being over intellectual, which is quite amazing, really. But, uh, it is. I don't, you once described intellectualism as being boring, though. I did? Yeah. Well. And you said, well, being called an intellectual, you, you, know, you feel that people think you are boring. Well, I think in this country, intellectualism does stand for, um, I suppose, thinking purely in terms of ideas and not thinking or not feeling in terms of um, human yeah. response. Yes. Emotion. Like, going back to a, a thing I, I read which you wrote, I can't remember what the book's called now, it's Common at the Movies, I think it was. You, you wrote a little piece in there, and it was about you you being persona non grata. Oh, yes. Which is basically you, you wandering around your quad at school. And your house no, master, that's right. Your housemaster said to you, well, if you carry on like this... Form and, master. And, form master, if you carry on like this, and you're going to be persona non grata, which is... Persona non grata with a great many people. Yeah. That's right. And I said, uh, you're probably right. Yes. Sir. But I think it's too late to change. And I was probably quite correct. And he was correct. Yes. Hmm. So, well, 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 I mean, one of the questions was, what about being a rebel? I mean, you, I'm sure, I mean, but if you set out to be a rebel, you, you must expect... Nobody sets out to be a rebel. What do you mean? I mean, you perhaps either you are. When I say nobody does, perhaps some people do. But um, it's a question of, I would say, temperament. A question of the way you are. Personality. You may be someone who questions, and I'm, I've had that misfortune, yes. You see it as a misfortune? Well, uh, you have to um, understand that I probably use, uh, speak with a certain irony oh, from time to time. Perhaps that doesn't come across very well. Mm. Perhaps your sense of irony isn't very well developed. Well, some of the things, like, particularly like the last time you, 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 mm -hmm. you when we spoke to you, we were watching back over the tape, and also when I sitting there, I must admit, once or twice, I did, if you don't mind me saying, I thought you were sort of taking the piss out of the person who's asking the question, because you thought the question maybe was, was a bit beneath answering, because it was, the question, the answer was in the question itself. I don't mind at all. Why should I mind? I don't mind, no. No, I think that, as I say, I have never set out to be a rebel. But, but you're very much seen one. as one by the establishment. Yeah, I mean, when they, when they put on um, Return to Hospital, I said, this is the film that can uh, confirm... But that's not the same, know. old boy, as setting out to be a rebel. So, so it may be somebody who questions established values. Mm. And I think I always have. So if we, if we go back to when you were at school then... Were you, well, when you had this incident where you said they probably are, what, what was it that you, were you questioning maybe, you know, like, put, there was like, obviously a group within your, your form that was on one side and you obviously sat on the other side and what were you, you obviously went to, went to challenge with them over something cool? No, I don't remember what that incident was about particularly, but, um, no, I think it comes from a consciousness, if you like, of, um, being a questioner of somebody who does not accept. I know it was very significant. I've always thought that very early on in my prep school, which I went to being a, a upper middle class origin, yeah. preparatory school, I remember an incident where I did, with another chap, stick up on the wall of the common room, I think, a notice saying, I rebel. I don't think it was about anything in particular. I think it was just rebelliousness. And uh, it was my brother who said, don't be an idiot, take it down. Whereupon I did. That is just an expression of a certain temperamental 
Right. Should, we should have read our question rather than our rebel. Anyone who questions questions the establishment surely is seen as a rebel anyway. Yes, I guess true. But something like prep school yes. though is, is very is a very ordered existence. It's you're told exactly what to do, like every, almost like every second. It's time. It is a timetable day of your life. So maybe what we just you went to prep school, didn't you? Well, I'm going to that. But anyway, yeah. Is <laughs> he up in middle class? <laughs> Why not? I well, I I I feel I I don't know. I just feel like as well, no classes almost. I don't you know. I don't conceive. You know whether whether anybody should should look down on anybody else, or whether they've had one education or another. I just feel feel like me. I am. I'm well, I completely good. agree with you, but one can be objective about it in a critical way and I think about I've never felt guilty about my origins but I know that it, it exists we live in a class society mm. so there's no point in denying that it doesn't mean you think <clears throat> it's particularly important and if I say I was upper middle class by birth that's just a fact mm. it's not something I either feel you do proud nice. of or guilty of but you didn't let it influence you as a filmmaker. I don't think so. So, so what did you, just going back to your brother, what did he go on to do when you were...? He went into the uh, army and um, then during the war he was in the Air Force. And after the war he flew aeroplanes in uh, India. Ah. Oh. So a... Like you, were in the, you were in the Indian intelligence, weren't you? No, no, I was in India and uh, in, in the British, 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 but I did work in yeah. intelligence. Mm. So did, that, 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 did that train you in questioning, do you think? No, I think it really is a, a, a temperamental thing. Yes, no, I don't think it trained me at all. No. Mm. I did have a classical education, which was perhaps a help. Perhaps that's why I tend to adopt the Socratic method of arguing by question and answer. Mm. Which is, to me, relatively new. Eh? Is it? Yes. Well, yes. I yes. mean, you talk, you don't, you don't expect to get these really deep, meaningful questions thrown at you periodically. Don't you? Well. Not in my normal existence, anyway. Ah. I try. Well, I'm glad you had a normal existence. <laughs> I see. But obviously what you do, you're obviously trying to form opinions of the people you're talking to, because otherwise you could, just, you could just sit there for three hours and we could just sit here for like, you know, just listen to you and you wouldn't know any, any more than what we looked like than when we walked through the door. Yeah. So, you know, unless you, you know, unless you... Well, somebody had an incredible ego who just like felt like talking to people, it would have been a, you know, unfulfilling experience. You're right. So I can only say, what do you want me to do? You see, why I probably react uh, in a slightly contrary way is because I suppose what I feel is that you want to use me, really. Mm. Isn't that so? Use. I haven't really thought of it in that way. More and more of us take Perhaps part. you should. Yeah. We should. Mm. You mean, I, cause I, cause I, well, I, I could see that, you know, all, all filmmaking on a left is using something of some form. You know, like in, you know, in Covent Garden Market, you use the people there. You know, you, but are you saying, you know, use you as in... Have you, 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 you as a person or use you, you as in, like, Lindsay Anderson, the name film director? Where, like, you know, if I said... Oh look, we've got a short film about Lindsay Anderson, filmmaker from director. Like, some time out, it'd be around the corner asking, "Well, can we see it?" No, I don't think it'd bother. Well, I, th I think it'd be of interest to. But anyway, listen. If you were going to say a film by Lindsay Anderson, you'd have to give me an idea that you understand what that means. Yes, which is what you've been trying to get from us for the last two hours. Yeah. Probably, I have. <laughs> have I succeeded? Well, only you can ask that, because... <laughs> you may, certainly made me think about... Well, that's a triumph. ...about what I'm about, and specifically thinking about is a film about a filmmaker, hopefully from a filmmaker's perspective. Yes, I mean, I'm... 
No, it is interesting you say that. I just suppose I'd have got, I, I don't know whether I'd have got myself as a filmmaker. I'm, I mean, I've, I've never felt myself exactly part of the film indus British film industry. And I don't think the British film industry or the British cinema thinks of me as being a part of itself. Because that question of being um, on the outside in a certain way, no. Did your brother ever see any of your work? Yes. And what was his what was his reaction? Uh, not. I don't really know. Not enormously um, responsive. Not enormously responsive. Of course, one of the things you see that would have to be mentioned, perhaps, is the fact that I've spent a lot of time <coughs> directing in the theatre. Yes, this is, this is the diff one thing I'm going to ask the differences between directing for the theatre and directing for film. Yeah, what about it? Well, what do you see the differences as being? I've never directed for theatre, so I can't speak about it. Well, I think that directing in the cinema is more um, wholly personal kind of occupation than directing in the theatre. I've always thought in the theatre that the director works or should work for the author and for his actors. I mean, one would only undertake, I've only undertaken nearly always, uh, work that I have liked and worked with people whom I liked. But uh, it's rather different from a film, which I think is a very subjective medium. So the films I made, I do regard as being probably personal or subjective in a way that my theatre productions aren't quite, mm. though they're certainly personal. Um, I mean, there are different rules in a way, I suppose. There are different styles from theatre and cinema. But um, I think in the end that uh, when I say that every day except Christmas could be regarded as a self-portrait, I think that is true of most films. Most films of their directors, you mean? They are, yes, yeah, self-portraits rather than um, objective works. But that's not true of all directors because there are many films that haven't any particular personal quality about them. They're, they're just... Um, um, Vehicles. Yes, or examples of technique. No. Yeah. Yes, functionary technique. Yes. How many how many theatre productions have you done? Because I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know the well, I can't remember now. I so don't. I'm, I'm, I'm actually about thirty. So, so yeah. I've done a lot of plays, of course, by David Story, yeah. whom presumably you know all about, since he's a working class writer. Well, I've read bits of him. Yes, I bits of him. What's that mean? Well, I'm, I'm more concentrating more on reading up on on film and, and theatre. So, I mean, there's, I mean, there's Warwick's got a huge library and I'm just trying reading it, you know, bits and pieces. Have you read any novels by David? No, I haven't. Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner is... He the, didn't write that. No, I know, but that's... that's Do you know who wrote it? It's written by Alan Sillitoe. Alan Sillitoe, yes, yes, right. That's Do you know who made the film? Terry T. Richardson. It was, quite right, yes. Yeah. Obviously, I know that one, yeah. But try, I, I try to... It's, as I say, it's, there's a difference between it being lived experience, which it is for you, and having read about it all from books. And is that tape still going round? Yes. It takes a long time, doesn't it? N 90 minutes, hey. It's okay. all right. I mean, I is mean, that 90 minutes on both sides? Oh, it's very close. Mm, yeah. Only about, what, five, ten minutes, is it? It's on the train, yes. Fifteen minutes between is the it? two. Is ah. it? Yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously it's a wider picture, your whole, you know, looking into it, your whole, your whole thing is theatre and, and film. But I think and, I'm, and as an author. And as an author, and... Yes. Three careers. Yeah, but we're talking... I about, know. We're talking here, we're talking to a four-hour mini-epic if we're... <laughs> we, can um, only, we can only have to cover certain small aspects, certain yeah. corners. And around the early... Have you uh, put that in now? That's, yes. that's, that was finished, that's that was the finished. finished. Hmm? This is the finished one. Finished. Have you put the new one in? Yes. Yeah. Is it going round? Yes. Oh. Sorry. Is it? It's all right. <laughs> well, 
Well, I'll probably be exhausted after a time. But I'll tell you what I could do. I could show you, if you have time. Yeah, yeah. Um, a film that I made quite recently. I was asked to do a film by a BBC producer in BBC Scotland who was doing a series called um, The Director's Place. Yeah. And I made a 50 minute film which I called Is That All There Is? And um, that was just my personal contribution to um, a wider series. Yeah. Well, to his series called yeah. uh, The Director's Place. So perhaps it might answer some of your questions. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Would it? I should think About so. the way I... But it, it isn't um, in any way a comprehensive yeah. thing about myself. Yeah. One of the... One of the yeah. Mm. Right. One of the key things we need to know, not to lose track of it, is, 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 is if it's possible to get hold of your early films and what it's going to... What it, what it's going to cost us to excerpts in. Oh. Well, like what? Like every day except Christmas in our dreamland. And if these, if it's all faintly feasible, yeah. I mean, there's, there's things that have come to mind, like education is, in, is, is, a, is a new bar hand, like handmaiden, sparsely clad and much interfered with. Well, interestingly, that was, as the headmaster's dialogue, um, to a great extent, taken from a book called How Eton Works right. by uh, a, a master from Eton. So he had written it. Did you credit him? No. Ooh, plagiarism. <laughs> that's right. Uh, well. So um, that's where that came from. Yeah, I mean, and then the thing, I mean, that's, that's very striking as a as a as a statement because he comes out as the modern the modern liberal, doesn't he? Right? Yes. And and what what he gets for his pains is a shot through the forehead. Well, that headmaster is very much, I think, influenced by my idea of the headmaster of Cheltenham College when I was at school there. Yeah. And it was a sort of it's a sort of. Um, headmaster who would always be called upon to appear on television to discuss modern progressive ideas of education. Yeah, he's, a, he's almost but a not too progressive, of course. Yeah. Not, of course, yes. Right. Mm. Cynicism. Yes. Not uh, um, in opposition to the system, of course. Mm. Which is summed up by the system, that whole system summed up at the end, of course, with the scene in the hall. And, uh, That's and, right. And the, uh, and the old general stands up and says, I don't propose to give you lads a lecture, but I'm going to give it a try. What was it? You lads are privileged to be here. Um, That's right. Many men would give their eye teeth to sit where you are. Was it freedom is the, free, freedom is the, priv is the privilege of, of every man who speaks with his tongue Shakespeare to talk to him? Yes. There you are, you see. As you can see, it's in the film a few times. Eh? <laughs> no, well, if, if of course, um, belongs to Paramount Films, mm. that is, uh, and it's significant, of course, that that is financially, that is an American film. We couldn't yeah. get any British company to back it. Mm. But. Um, it's, it's, it, it was done through an act, through an actor's company, wasn't it? Whose name escapes me. Memorial. Yes, it? Memorial. Yes. That's right. That was um, Albert Finney. Albert company. Finney. Yeah. Yes. And um, produced by Michael Menwin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got various stills of you all there together. I, I found a, a bit written in sight and sound about filming in the Louvre. And... Oh, you did. Yeah. Mm. But oh, Dreamland, I'm sure you can use anything you can get hold of. And uh, every day except Christmas, I don't know, it's a Ford Motor Company, I suppose, owned it. But um, to be honest, I don't quite know. Have you got a personal copy of oh, Dreamland? Or? I think so, yes. Mm. Do you mean on tape? Well, whatever. Yes, I have. Because mm. I haven't been able to see the whole of that yet. Well, it's only ten minutes long. And you showed a bit of it on your thing about free Oh, no, that's right. Mm. And there's a description of it by Jim Hoggett. Is it Tim? Someone in Reed writing in Sight and Sound. 
I read, I read you a bit of it last time and said, well, did you think that was a fair description? You said very good. I did? Yeah. Good. Well, I hope I didn't seem to say it ironically. Mm. Now, come on, ask another question. <laughs> well, I have to. I'm going to be talking to you, you know. It's, oh, uh, I see. It's, uh, I, <laughs> I'm trying to develop a style which which we're trying to put it going to try and if we if we can get the money if if you agree if, if so and so on so on and so forth that uh, it doesn't look cliche it doesn't look like it's been done before yes well, many many times I'm not mad about the idea of going to a shopping mall no no I, I gathered that but yeah. I'd have to say to you why don't you make a film about a shopping mall this is what you said you see at the time I mean I, I made a film I made a little film about this this street called Broad Street, which has got the ICC and the International Convention Centre, it's like massive, huge. And then I went and tape recorded interviews. It was on Standard 8, this little film I edited onto High Band and went and did interviews with people in the streets. And uh, haven't really shown it around much yet, but uh, I'm tried. Mm. Um, to get a foothold, to get that sort of start, start that gets you noticed or whatever. Yes. Which was... So have you finished at uh, college now? Oh, ages ago. Oh, ages Ten years ago. Oh, I see. So what do you do? I'm a technician at Warwick University. It pays my money when I do something What else. kind of a technician? Electronics. Plays with lasers, wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Inelastic in electron tunneling spectrometer is what I'm building at the moment. Good lord. Yes, you, you, mm. you've often heard, heard of those, yes, I know. So, tends, to be, tends to be the only stuff that exists in the world that I build. Now, is there something else concrete you want to ask me? Uh, not, not, not particularly concrete, no. No. Or turn the tape off. Well, perhaps I should just show you that tape, shall Yeah, yeah okay.